Hello, and welcome to the RDFOX Getting Started Guide. In this episode, we'll run through some graph queries, including select, construct, and ask, and some graph updates, including insert, delete, load, and clear. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need an RDFOX license, RDFOX up and running, the RDFOX documentation for the dataset, and optionally, the Sparkle specification. If you're not sure how to start RDFOX or the console, check out our previous videos that show you how to do just that. Before we jump into the queries and updates, first we need to create a data store and import some data. This is simple enough. I'm going to call my data store family and drag and drop my data.ttl file over to import it. So that you can follow along, you can get this same dataset from the RDFOX documentation under section 3.1 getting started. Now that's all set up, let's dive into our first query. This is the simplest query, but arguably one of the most important ones, the default select. Select extracts data from the graph, returning the results. This particular query will return all of the triples that you have in the data store. If we break down this query into sections, we can see how that happens. Within the WHERE clause, we describe the pattern the query looks for within the data. Here we have three variables, as indicated by the question marks, representing that a triple can have any value in any position. Here we're using the three special variables, capital S, P, and O, to open up some additional features of the console that we'll see in a little bit, but in general, you can call them whatever you like. Next to the select keyword itself, you can see the output variables. These determine what will be returned from the pattern that the query finds. Here, we've asked for S, P, and O, all of the variables, and therefore, all of our data. By running this query, we get exactly what we expect, our entire data set. This query will be useful to us later, so I'm going to duplicate the tab so that we can come back to it as and when we need it. Okay, so what if we want something more specific? Say, all of the people in our dataset. Since we'll be using specific properties from our data, I'm going to define a prefix so that we don't have to write this out every single time. Within the WHERE clause, we can swap out the O for person so that we only consider triples where the object is person. We want the subject of all these triples, so we need to change the output to S accordingly. Running this query then returns a list of all of our people. Moving on to something a little more complex, next on the list is construct. In contrast to select, which simply returns variables as they're matched to data elements, the output of construct is an RDF graph itself that can be saved and loaded independently should you want to. This won't affect the data in your data store, but it will give you access to views that don't otherwise exist. That's all a little complicated, so it's best shown by example. Construct S generation child, O generation parent, where S has parent O. This query might look a little more complicated, but it follows the same principles as before. The aim here is to find everyone in a parent-child relationship and then separate them into parents and children. Crucially, the properties generation, child, and parent are not in our dataset. If we run this query, we can see the table of results now shows each person has been described as a parent or child. If we take a look at the Construct Explorer, we can see this graphically. This view was enabled because we used the special variables S, P, and O in uppercase. Remember that the properties we have introduced here were not a part of our dataset and have not been added. That's what makes this view so useful. There are of course ways to add this information directly to the data, but there are many reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. To save memory, for one. Because we're not adding anything, if we explore the results where you can only view the results in the context of the data store, we don't see our new properties. 
just the existing subjects and objects. RDFOX fills in the predicates for us, so that we're not just left with floating nodes out of context. Let's take a look at something a little simpler. Ask. A very straightforward query that returns true or false, depending on whether the query has a solution or not. For example, ask Peter a person. This returns true, whereas if we change Peter for Brian, this returns false. That's because Peter is of type person in our dataset, whereas Brian is not. Moving on from the queries, our next group of keywords are the updates. Unlike the queries that have no effect on the data store itself, updates have the ability to add, change, and otherwise manipulate the data. The logical place to start is with insert. With this keyword, you can insert data into your dataset. There are two primary ways to do this. The first is to directly add a new triple. To do this, you must use the data clause. So the insert statement understands that you're asking it to add data directly. For example, let's give Brian a class as the only being currently without one. Here, we're adding a new name, the class, dog, and stating Brian's relationship to it, adding a new fact. If we now view our data with the first select query, we can see that Brian is now a dog. The second method is to introduce new relationships new predicates between existing nodes. This time, the additional clause you need to declare is where, so that the insert knows what to do with the new relationships. You might have noticed that our married to predicate only points in one direction. We can make sure this relationship goes in two directions. Insert x married to y, where y married to x. This inserts the relationship x married to y, wherever it finds an instance of y married to x. Again, by using our original select query, we can see that our married to relationship now runs in both directions. Sometimes we want to remove data instead of adding it. And that's where delete comes in. Just like its additive counterpart, delete can be used to delete standalone facts or relationships that build on the existing network. To show this in action, Let's remove the class dog from Brian. Exploring the data once again, we can see that Brian no longer has the class dog attached. In fact, the class dog no longer exists in our dataset. Insert and delete can be used together and form a powerful tool when they are. This can be used to update or swap out specific parts of the graph. For example, in our dataset, we say that the children have parents. Perhaps instead, we want to say that it is the parents who have the children. To make this change, we can use the following update. Delete s has parent o, insert o has child s, where s has parent o. This locates instances of the has parent relationship, deletes them and introduces the has child relationship instead swapping around the subjects and objects in the process. Now, if we explore our data once again, we can see that the has parent relationship has been removed and the has child relationship has been introduced. Okay, so let's say you want to do all of this with lots of data, not just the odd fact. Perhaps you want to import a file. We've shown you that you can drop and drag, but that's not always appropriate. Instead, you can use the load function. It's very simple. All you need is the local or hosted file address and RDFox will take care of the rest. A word of warning though, unfortunately, this doesn't work out of the box on Windows and requires some extra steps. If you do need to do this, take a look over our docs or get in touch with us for some help setting up. As with the others that came before it, if you want to reverse this importing process, simply use clear in place of load to delete the data in your file from the data store. The alternate way to clear your data store is to go up to menu and select clear all content. Click clear all and your data will be deleted. By running our select query again, you'll see that no data remains in the data store. Other updates of note 
are for graph management. We'll cover them in more detail in a later video, but for now, it's good to be aware of them. They include, but are not limited to, create, drop, copy, move, and add, allowing you to create and delete graphs, as well as move data between them. Finally, there are a number of modifiers, functions, and clauses that can add detail to your updates and queries. There are too many to cover here, so we suggest that you look at the Sparkle spec to find whatever is most appropriate for your situation. A few basics of particular note are bind, that set the variable to a specific value, filter, that can be used to narrow down the search criteria or results, limit, that limits the number of results, and order by, that specifies how the results are sorted. Others, like not exist, sum, coalesce, and the many other tools at your disposal will help you to craft all of the queries that you could want. So there you have it. You now have all of the basic building blocks to get started writing Sparkle queries and updates, and the materials that will help you grow to introduce more and more complexity as you need it. There is a lot more to learn about Sparkle, and this is by no means a comprehensive Sparkle education. However, there are excellent Sparkle tutorials out there that we suggest you find and run through yourself. You can, of course, use RDFOX to practice anytime you like, trying out what you learn as you go. Subscribe for videos on more advanced topics and for more detail about the points we've covered here. Thank you. See you next time.